special guest today. His name is John O'Malley. His, oh my gosh, he has such a vast background. We're going to be talking about a number of things. We're going to be talking about who he is and all of the awesome things he's done. Um, we're going to be talking about his company, Planet Sun. We're going to be talking about um, how to protect your skin. I'm really bad at that. I need to really listen to when you talk about that. We Let me introduce you. Here's John. Get you Aloha. In hey, folks. <laughs> We're also going to be talking about his work with children and teaching them about sun protection and probably about some of the athletes that he sponsors and about his new launch. Just a wide variety of really awesome things. So let's jump into it. John, who are you? Tell us your background. Where wow, you there you from. go. Where do we begin, huh? Well, first off, thanks for having us on this great of show. Of course. I, I grew up in a place um, far away called Pennsylvania. So far, I've never heard of it. <laughs> a town called Scranton, Pennsylvania. And um, I have to say I'm, I'm very fortunate because the, the people of, of Pennsylvania are hardworking, hard-loving, um, hard-playing kind of folks. And um, things that are, are important in your upbringing there are sports, religion, music, um, good cheap beer. Um, <laughs> some of the best are made in Pennsylvania. But nonetheless, the, the community there is quite profound, and we have this thing we call in Hawaii Ohana. Well, out in Hawaii, out in Pennsylvania, it's very, very much there too in community. So my upbringing, um, I tell people, you know, who you are has a lot to do with where you come from. Right. And, and coaches, uh, teachers, priests, nuns were, were a big part of my, my foundation. And a lot of that has led me to the path I've taken in life and, and where I am right now. And your adventureness. My your, adventureness. He, he's an adventurer, and one of your key things in life is that you like to guide others. Yes. Um, the well, the, the whole journey I took as a child, and then throughout high school and college, led me eventually to the military, and um, no surprise there. So, um, and I was fortunate enough to to be able to go to ROTC in college, and and there um, that began a um, a career of, of being a leader and a coach throughout that 20 year period. And I take that seriously because I was given so many opportunities and I had so many great mentors and teachers, not only again throughout my childhood, but also in my military career. And some of the most amazing people in the world, really. Um, so I take that role very seriously in life as, as a guide. And I look at life, my, my life perspective is, I look at life like an adventure. And, and, and like any adventure you have, you have danger, you have peril, you have success, you have joy, um, and you also have goals and objectives. And, uh, you know, another thing I'm, I'm very intent on is making people understand that, that life is a team sport. You can't go through life alone. No. You can't do it. So, so that, that foundation and that journey I've been on thus far it has really helped me kind of define my, my own purpose in life and, and help them to guide and, and teach others and and that begins with my immediate family with my kids and then people that I I meet through sport um, and then through business as well so that's that's a, a big part of who I am and a big part of who you are too is athletics right yes so why um, don't you tell us about all the all the different things you've done sports. Well, there, he was there a bodybuilder again, yeah That's well there athletic. there again growing up in Pennsylvania I mean sports is part of the, the culture when I was growing up, I'm like you probably, we had like two channels of TV. Right. So, so I, I, I lived outside. My parents had to kind of chain me down. You know, my wife does here too now in Hawaii. Which is the best way to be, though. You don't yes. want to be one of these people inside. I, I, well, everybody's Watching different. Television. Yeah, and, and, but a lot of that um, lends to socialization, too. It does, because our culture is getting ruined with interaction. It, 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 is, it is a unique perspective now in society. Um, but that the just the act of being outside puts you in that environment more to to have to deal with people and whatever so so pennsylvania big outdoor state um you know the the great all-american sports of course were part of our life football baseball wrestling basketball all that good stuff um but then once i got into college i started looking at other things too like you know bodybuilding lifting weights and then 
then uh, the military um, became more of a focus on endurance, and just by virtue of training for, for combat and, and strength and speed and endurance, you know, more of a, a, a broader depth in, in that. But the, the, the athletic background I had growing up certainly helped me oh, of in, course. The, in the military. Yeah, agility, you know, balance, um, just acute, you know, coordination, things of that nature. Um, so, so that that transcended into military, and and then. Um, and what made you want to go into the military? That that's interesting. <laughs> that's very interesting. Um, I studied, ironically, criminal justice in college. I wanted to be a federal agent. So one of my mentors uh, advised me to to get some military background. And um, so I I decided to enroll in ROTC, and uh, one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. And that began the process of the military career. And you know, my aspiration was to stay in just for a few years. Um, but as we talked about earlier, if I would have told you, you know, 30 years ago that I would have spent 20 years in the military and then own a sun care company in Hawaii 10 years later, I'd say you're crazy. But that's how life works sometimes. So um, that, that began the beginning of my military career was was one piece of advice I got. And you were and in the military for 20 years, correct? 20 years, and um, I was fortunate enough to, to get to Hawaii in my last assignment, what became my last assignment. And once I got here, I looked around this place, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is incredible. Um, and at that point, too, um, throughout, towards the end of my career, I started getting into triathlon, you know, and really enjoy that. And, of course, Hawaii is the home. It is. It's the mecca. Um, of course, the world championships of off-road, on-road triathlon are here. So, so that, that began that um, aspect of my life. And um, uh, so, so triathlon became a big, and adventure racing too. Um, we did a lot of that here in Hawaii and abroad. And the military um, assignment I had here uh, took me out of Hawaii into Asia and, and Micronesia, so I had to travel, a lot of great travel, and got to see a lot of cool things. So there, there in, in lie, again, the shaping of my life um, throughout childhood, the military, and then towards the end with sport, but then also traveling. We're in Europe for, for six years as well before oh, wow. I got here. So I've been incredibly fortunate. And, and you've um, been around a bunch of different cultures. Exactly. And I've been so fortunate to have uh, a broader um, focus, and I look at life differently with different lenses because I've seen a lot of different cultures and, and, um, and places, too. And you decided to stay here, so what was about the culture in Hawaii that you liked? It was totally about the terrain and, and, the, um, and, and, the, and the, the, mind, the health mindset here. Um, this has got to be the healthiest place on earth. and. I, I go back home and to places in the mainland where I see people, I, I, I run around and train with people that are in their 60s and 70s too, and, and I, I, I look at folks back in some parts of the mainland and those folks are smoking a pack a day and they're, you know, they're, they're done. Yep. You know, but here, just the, the attitude and the mindset is so different. No, I remember running a road race mm -hmm. in Kailua and there was a man that was 102 there and he did go. it barefoot. And I was just like, I've never seen any. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. Amazing, yeah. yeah. So that's, um, that's part of the, the journey thus far. And now you're with your company. Mm -hmm. You've just launched. What is the launch called again? Well, the, the company, we're at year seven right now. And we launched a... Um, a kickstart. A Kickstarter program. Very exciting for a new endeavor for, for making sun protective clothing. And the difference in what we're doing now compared to everything else we've made, all of our other products, is that we made these products here in Hawaii. And the intent is to continue to make them here. So we are also trying to establish the capability to, to be able to manufacture performance um, sun protective apparel here. And how hard has that been? Because I know you've been, you told me earlier yeah, that it was a bit of a struggle. It's been a wild journey. It, it took us about a year you know, to develop the clothing. Um, prior to the, the clothing, we've been on another journey all together with skincare, you know, making sunscreen, and then we started making hats and other stuff. But the clothing has been the most challenging because it's very technical. And the, the other thing that, that took us some time, too, was we spent a very long time scouring the islands, trying to find 
people who can make these products. Because once we started doing our research, we found that most of the apparel that's being made here, and it's, it's great stuff, is, is really down to um, bikinis, aloha wear, um, mumus, and, and evening wear. Resort, a lot, and, and it's driven by the, the economy and, and people who are, are visiting and what Forest. people need here. Right. But therein lie the irony of what we found, is, and we talked about it before, is that Hawaii is, is really an epicenter for, for sport, for, particularly for endurance sports, and not just triathlon and, and, and running, but the world championships of paddling are here, ocean outrigger canoe paddling, um, surf skiing, uh, stand-up paddle boarding. So we're like, whoa, you know, we should have these, this, this, these kind of... No, and I know just yeah. working in retail, we get people that come in all the time and they're like, I want SPF gear. Yeah. And we're like, uh, everything has a basic SPF of 15. And they're like, well, that's not, you know, and it doesn't cut it. Yeah. If you're going to be out there for a long time, it doesn't. And I have, I, this is the first time I've seen anything like that. Well, so the, so the, the, the uh, mid near term goal is to be able to make these, these products here, but then the end state is to help also establish a capability to, to keep making more. And we, we've made hats, like I said, um, throughout different places in the world. This is a hat for surfing. You can actually duck dive in it. Um, you know, we've outsourced the production of these products. So very exciting endeavor now to evolve a capability here locally to make things like this. And, and as far as we found, again, nobody is doing this right now. And I'm wearing a shirt. <laughs> Woo! Check me out. I'm on board. Um, do you want to talk about why these products are important? So very good. Skincare. Yeah, very. In fact, yeah. Let's let's look at some of the science of things here. Very simply, um, in Hawaii, a lot of people don't realize how strong the sun is here, and, and it all goes back to something called the the UV index, the ultraviolet index, which is basically a measurement of the intensity of the sun. And here in Hawaii, we we average between very high and extreme nine months out of the year. So in my own experience coming here from all over the world and growing up in Pennsylvania, I had no idea how strong the sun was here. Well, I didn't either. I knew in Mexico it's really strong Yeah. because I go there, but here I had no clue. Much of it has to do with proximity to the equator. Right. Yeah, and, and, and physics. So um, that, that was part of the, the reason why we launched the company. And um, it goes back to, to, again, how strong the sun is here, but also the active lifestyle where people are putting themselves in the sun because we, we have great weather, you know, year round pretty much. And, um, and like I was saying, um, between the months of, of February through November, we're, we're, very, we're typically a very higher extreme in the UV index. Um, so the, that's part of the underpinnings of the company. And that's why it's important. Um, even for kids here, you know, you can go to the beach any day of, of the week here and, and see children running around with no shirts on and, and no hats. And, in fact, in Australia, where they, they got with the program a lot sooner than we did, out of sheer necessity, um, kids are not allowed to go to school without a hat on, you know. So, oh, wow. so there's, there's programs that have been instituted in other places in the world because the, the issue, it, it became a big issue. And also want to note, too, here in the United States, uh, last July, the, the U.S. Surgeon General launched a call to action against skin cancer prevention basically telling all Americans to get, get with the program right. because the, the rates have increased tremendously, but also the cost on the health care system. Uh, that was part of the reasoning for that. Um, and, you know, the, the skin cancer rates in Hawaii as well are very high, and they're hard to track because most skin cancers are not reportable. So uh, we, we, we get the numbers are derived from insurance codes from, from the hospitals here. And um, in 2000, between 2008 and 2014, the, the cases have doubled um, onwards of about 12,000 uh, cases of skin cancer. Um, and I, I think that doesn't include melanoma, which is the most deadliest form of skin cancer. So, so there in line, another reason, the, the skin cancer rates, um, and not only in Hawaii, but in the United States, are on the rise. And, and um, that, that's a lot of the reasoning behind the company. Well, this is a perfect place to take a commercial break. <laughs> good. We're learning so much. I'm learning so much. I need to hear this all because I don't wear sunscreen. That's not good. Um, this is the Empower Hour. I am your host, Miley Scarpino. I am here with John O'Malley, and we will be back in a few. 
Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I'm a senator from the Big Island. I work in the ER there. But on Tuesday afternoons, I get to come and spend 45 minutes to an hour with Jay Fidel and the Think Tech staff. They're terrific professionals. They help us to bring some of the leading, cutting edge topics here across our state to you. So you can join us at our show on healthcare in Hawaii to talk with leaders from across all the spectrum of health in our state. Or you can join us for any other show where we talk about economic development or tourism or some really eclectic programs too. So really, we'd love to see you here on our show. Thanks for joining us and thanks for supporting us. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. That's Ted Ralston. You know, Ted is the uh, host of uh, Where the Road Leads. It shows uh, every Friday from 4 to 5 p.m. It's about technology. It's about how people collaborate and, and solve problems with modern technology. It's where the road leads. We all know that. We should all be listening. Join us there, 4 to 5 p.m. every Friday. Now, what about that do you agree with? All of it. I knew he'd say that. Aloha. Say aloha. Aloha. Good. Well, welcome back to the Empower Hour, guys. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. I am here with John O'Malley. We were just going over sun protection, why it's important, um, talking about his company, Planet Sun. And now we're going to jump back a little bit and talk about how his company got started, why he decided to make performance sun protection. All right. Well, there, there you go, right to the beginning. Okay, so there I was. I got to Hawaii, just totally excited to be all over this place in the sun and um, really embraced the community, the, the sporting community and, and started racing triathlons, adventure racing and started getting some really bad sunburns. Um, and then uh, at the finish line of a triathlon in Maui in 2006 it was, um, another local uh, endurance athlete, really good guy named Paul Sibley, we were at the end of, the, of this race and I had this wicked sunburn and Paul was covered in head to toe with um you know with with hats in fact we have a hat here i'll show you later that that was designed after what i learned from him but you know long sleeve shirt and whatever and it turns out that paul um almost died of melanoma he got skin cancer so i'm there with the sunburn he's there a guy with you know battled against skin cancer and we both had been all over the world and we realized too that we'd never experienced the sun as strong as it is in hawaii so that that discussion was the the great epiphany that that led to the beginning of of the beginning and that was in 2006 then i retired in 2008 and um all that time we were kind of formulating uh, the ideas about the company and then we launched in 2008 and we've been at it hard ever since and what happens when you get sunburned well your sun <laughs> sunburn is actually not a good and even tanning is not a good thing it's basically your body's reaction to an adverse stimuli okay yeah same thing with the eyes. We have another issue in Hawaii called pterygium. It's um, a condition um, on the conjunctiva, the outer coating of the eye, where you're, you're basically your, your eye produces a little growth to protect itself from the sun and, and, and salt air and the wind. Same thing, your melanin in your, your skin um, is, is changing, is reacting to, to the sun. The sunlight. Exactly. So, um, but we do need some sunlight because of vitamin we D. We need correct? Sun, sun, sunlight is essential for the synthesis of vitamin D and, right. and good health, exactly. Um, like everything in moderation, right? So we have we have three different types of energy that we typically think about from the sun that, um, with respect to to skin cancer, and that's ultraviolet A, B, and C. Um, UV, UVC we're not too concerned about because most of that's absorbed by the atmosphere. Okay. When, I, when you think about UVA and B, UVA think aging. Those are the rays that are mm. so strong that they actually penetrate beneath the skin. Okay. Um, and they cause... Wrinkles. Wrinkles and damage, aging. UVB burning. Okay. Right. So those are the rays that actually make our skin redden. And for a long time, um, that's one thing about sunscreen too, is um, SPF you mentioned unique thing about sunscreen. SPF is only a UVB rating. We started making sunscreen a long time ago. Um, we were more concerned about UVB because that's what physically made, you know, the our burn. skin red and right. Right. So the industry kind of built around that where sunscreens were, were designed to primarily protect you against UVB. So SPF is only a UVB rating. Um, but then we got smart about the other 
energy and realize that, oh my God, UVA is even more, more damaging in some cases. So um, now we're, you're looking for, for products that have full spectrum coverage, not just UVB, UVA and B. And what about your sunscreen? Does that have UVA and B or oh, just UV? Yes, ma'am. That stuff is, that's the good stuff. So um, full spectrum, that's what you want to look for in a sunscreen. And, um, and the other thing too about while we're on the topic, sunscreen, the FDA went through some big changes um, about two years ago because the industry kind of got a little bit, a little bit out of the box on SPF um, with 80, 90, 100. Um, and anything past 50 isn't better, right? That's what I've heard. Uh, right. The, 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 the real good standard is 30. 30. Uh, 30 takes you about 97.3% UVB protection. So beyond 30, it's the protection is fractional, and it's not linear either, either meaning um, an SPF 30, 97.3, SPF 40 could be like 97.6, SPF 50, 98. So it really topples out, you know, by physics at, at 30, and it incrementally is so small that beyond 30, it, it's... The difference isn't it, it's, big it's marginal. The other things that are important with sunscreen are the water-resistant properties, um, you got to look for a product that is, is very water resistant if you're going to be outside. That's an 80 minute standard. In fact, the FDA termed or banned the term waterproof because there is no sunscreen that is completely waterproof. Right. right. Same thing with sunblock. You won't see that term any longer. The term sunblock no longer used in the vernacular because there's no sunscreen that actually blocks all the sun. Um, so, and then other differentials to our nutritional value, things that are good for your skin. We put a lot of that in our product, um, and the lifeguards really like that stuff because they're, they're sitting there getting salted all day. Right. You know, in, in a chair and other people too. And that's, that's why, you know, the nutritional value in, in skincare products is so important for athletes because you're out in the elements. The salt air, the wind, the chlorine if you're in a pool. Right. You see what chlorine does to clothing. Yeah. You know, so... Um, our sunscreens, one thing we do differently is you put a lot of nutrition in our, our face. Yeah, that's our body sunscreen. So we have um, it's zinc and titanium base, and that's also got green tea, cocoon, and aloe. And then our, our face sunscreen is, is all natural, and it's just chock full of good stuff. Shea butter, beeswax, sweet almond, coconut, rosemary. And women, we look for that kind of stuff because we're so particular about what we put on our face. Well, hey, message too to all the guys out there. Same deal. You want to look good, right? <laughs> so, so, but, you know, the other thing too is, is athletes know this, not only uh, with respect to the skin, but just knowing a little bit more about the importance of nutrition, especially endurance athletes, right. because that's going to make or break, Oh, completely. You know, your yeah. training, your recovery, yeah, everything. Yeah, exactly. You know the deal. So, so that's the... We kind of went off there a little bit on sunscreen, but that's that's the whole story on sunscreen. Um, and then you have the five, uh, the five S's. Well, that's the educational that? part. So, yeah. so the company um, we built it too, just to a little bit of retrospective here on 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 the company and 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 what the focus is. We developed it to be not a sunscreen company, but a sun care skin care. We came out with some other items for more of a head to toe approach. Ironically, this is one of the most sought-after items sometimes in our inventory. These are this is a UV umbrella here. Um, so this product here, um, we're practicing good sun care by virtue of shade and shelter. Um, some people can't wear sunscreen. Some people don't want to wear sunscreen. That's me. I'm like not a sunscreen person. And some people who regrettably might be going through chemotherapy treatment, or whatever, they it's hard to put it on the skin. So this gives you the ability to go outside and still enjoy nature in Hawaii without risk of, skin, of, of, um, of damage to your and skin. And you were telling me earlier it's almost like a cocoon because it keeps you cool. Yeah, there's some more, more education about the sun too is um, the sun emits all kinds of different energy. Um, we typically, when we think about the sun we, and skin cancer, we think about ultraviolet. Um, but in all actuality, the heat component, when you feel warm, that's a different form of energy um, that's caused from thermal radiation are, are IR, infrared. So this material also blocks IR. And we'll talk about the clothing a little bit later too. There's actually uh, uh, garments now, textiles that are used for manufacturing clothing that also block IR. So 
pretty fascinating technology, and you know, no, so that awesome. so therein lie the the delineator on on sun care beyond sunscreen. So you know, we talked about hats and and uh, the clothing. You've got those 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 very cool UV oh, sleeves, yeah, sleeves over there. I didn't put them on. It. I didn't feel <laughs> yeah. I didn't feel cool enough to wear these. But here are some of his sleeves. So running sleeves. You know, that's a you know, and golfers, um, cyclists, of course, triathletes. Um, protecting the sleeves, you know, your arms are a very exposed part of the body if you're wearing a short sleeve shirt, and the sleeves are a great beginning to what we came out with in the clothing. Um, so, comprehensive approach to sun care, head to toe. Now, and then the other aspect of the company, too, is the education. Right. Right, and that's where the five S's of super sensational sun and care. And we're going to see some pictures come up. Do you want to oh, explain cool. any of these? Hey, pictures yeah, there we go. There you are. There I am in, in rare form here with the kids. So right now, in fact, we're in high gear with education. Um, we're doing uh, presentations and clinics for the Junior Lifeguards uh, program here in Oahu, and also a lot of summer camps. Um, this picture here is from an archery camp recently put on by a good friend. Um, and we're very, very just elated and excited to see a lot of um, camp directors uh, and, and leaders in sport now wanting to put sun safety into the curriculum. Because it it's really is important. It is. In, in Hawaii, it's, it's actually, it should be really seriously considered. Um, and, and the kids, you know, it all begins at a young age, you know, and more damage is done in most cases in the preteen years specifically to the eyes um, and with with kids we're learning that we have to appeal to their vanity um, melanoma the deadliest form of skin cancer is quite inconspicuous it, it's a mole you know it's got irregular borders and but there's other forms of skin cancer that are a little more insidious like squamous and basal cell where they they're, they're they can be bigger and they can be you know bleeding and, and scabbing kids see that and they're a little more concerned but when you show them a picture of um someone who's aged dramatically you know from the remember tanning mom yeah if you remember that yeah on the news you show them a picture of that and like ooh, because they get it and and it, it, it impacts their perspective on on vanity so we've learned how to really incorporate more of that into the education um to where they're they're really seeing what the sun can do with respect to damage. So we built a curriculum. Um, the Aussies and the Kiwis really got it right in Australia and New Zealand because they, they've been dealing with these issues much longer. So they, they had a model you may see out there, slip, slop, slap, um, which is great. And we took a little bit of, of literary uh, liberty on that and, and we, we coined another, a couple more S's. Um, so we've got slip, slop, slap, seek, and sip, the five S's of super sensational sun care. Um, slip on the good clothing, the UV protective clothing, hats, sleeves, shirts. Um, of course, slop on the sunscreen, we get that. Um, slap on a cool pair of shades. Seek shade, of course, we talked about the umbrellas, and then sip to stay hydrated. Hydration is is quite often an overlooked area of skin ca of um, skin yeah, cancer we were talking about that and sun care. Too. Yeah, because your skin is your first line of defense, you know, against many things to include the sun. So if you're not properly hydrated, your skin is not going to be able to do its job. So we use that as the um, the baseline for our, our education, even if we're talking to third graders or docs and derms, because we get into the detail then on the precautions we take. Um, when we're, we're, we're slopping on sunscreen, you know, how it's made. Of course, we, we talked to that with, with docs and derms, but the kids were, were more focused on, you know, when to put it on and how long you should, when you should reapply and things like that. So that's the framework for the education. Well, that's awesome. Hmm? That's good that we're seeing, we're, that you're doing that. We well, need thank that. thank you. Thank we you. We need that in the community. Um, and then we have your line of clothing here. All right. So... The big, the big evolution for us now, as we talked about earlier, um, lie in, in developing a line of clothing. And again, the, the skin care, important, the shade, important. But the one thing we, we've learned about with sunscreen, one of the biggest problems are human problems, where people, they, they put it on real quick, 
they go out for five or six hours not reapplying and right. they wonder why they get burnt. And also, too, regardless of what the commercials say, don't put sunscreen on wet skin. Just don't do it. Um, sorry, industry, but that's not a smart thing to do. Anyways, so the great thing about the clothing is, um, you know. And before we jump into it, I hate yeah. to cut you off. We're going to take oh. a short commercial. Okay, let's do it. And then we can get back and, like, really dive into okay. it all. good, good, And good. not get cut off. This is the Empower Hour. I'm your host, Miley Scarpino. I'm here with John O'Malley, and we will be back to see the most exciting part, <laughs> his new launch of his clothing line. Okay, thanks. Aloha, how you doing? I'm Gordon of the Texar here on Think Tech Hawaii, where we co-host Hibachi Talk, where we talk about technology and bring in all kinds of cool guests. Also, my co-host with me today is Andrew, Andrew, the, the, Andrew the security guy. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Think Tech Hawaii and thanks for watching Hibachi Talk. We also have Angus. Have you ever had a lab? Because Angus, I bring in all kinds of wee things. Oh, look, you see my lips moving. <laughs> <laughs> Aloha. My name is Jim Sean, and I'm host of a show called Education Movers, Shakers, and Reformers. Each week, live streaming at noon on Think Tech Hawaii, we interview people who have special insights into education from early education through K-12, all the way through higher education and beyond. Both public and private are areas we're interested in. We dig deeper. We try to find out uh, what it's really like to be involved in making change, advocating for it, how you reform, what people's philosophies are in reforming it. Uh, as I said, we're live streaming every Wednesday at noon on Think Tech Hawaii. And later on, you can find these interviews on YouTube and on the Hawaii Educational Policy Center website. We hope you join us as many times as possible. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage here on Think Tech Hawaii. Center Stage airs every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, and of course you can check out our archives on YouTube or on Think Tech Hawaii anytime you like. Why should you do that? Because this is an arts show that I believe is making a difference in lives. We talk with uh, artists of various ilk. We talk with painters and, and writers, playwrights, novelists, poets, sculptors, dancers, um, you name it, directors, but, uh, actors, of course. And we don't only talk about what people do, but we talk about how they do it. And my favorite part of the conversation, we talk about why they do it. And it's really common on this show to hear people say, wow, I didn't think about it that way. And it's very common to hear people afterwards who have seen the show say the same thing. And I hear all the time that people are inspired by the conversations that we have. So why don't you join us and be inspired too. That's center stage on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock. Oh, here we go. Welcome back to the Empower Archive. And it's fun. Got like some information there for you guys. And now we're going to be introduced to John's new Kickstart campaign line. What do you want to start with? Okay. Kickstart campaign, Planet Sun, Sun Protective Clothing. We have like 12 days left to get this thing done. And, and, um, and make high quality sun care products in Hawaii. So we've been, um, again, it took about a year to develop the clothing and even more time to, to work with the, the people in the industry here that were capable of making it. And, and um, I'm very grateful for that. So what we have here is um, a line of clothing designed for, for both land and for ocean sport. We have two tops here for the land. Um, you may see people running around in, tri in triathlons with wearing a singlet, right. you know, like a tank top. Yep. So this top here was actually designed to wear directly over that. So if you have a tank top on, a lot of exposure on the shoulders and the back, this is called the sun wing. Um, and it's really neat too because we, we put an adjustable uh, little system on here so you can adjust the fit because not all tank tops are cut the same, right? right. So here you can adjust the fit and dial that in. And um, all the garments here, um, you can see in, in live action in our 
our, our movie for our Kickstarter campaign. Um, the other, the second shirt for land we call the Sun Multisport shirt, this is made with Kona in mind. Do you want me to hold it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, triathlon, you go to Ironman now every year in, in Kona, there's more people racing in long sleeve um, apparel because we're getting it, we're getting with it now. So this shirt here, um, is made, it's got mesh on the side. Now the interesting thing about it, it's made with a material called ice fill, which um, some very unique um, technology here. And the industry has, has gotten, in the last three to five years, has come up with some amazing things. So this material actually, when it hits the skin, it lowers the skin temperature by about three to five degrees. Yeah, I'm touching it right now and it's right. cool to the touch. So, so going out now, ain't, it's not like running in the cotton t-shirt you had, you know, four or five years ago. This is really, really some cool science. So the cooling technology, um, and we talked about infrared before, this material also blocks IR. Um, so it's got a cooling property, it blocks IR and UV, and we added some mesh. We eliminated an underarm seam. So if you're running, you're not going to chafe up. Right. And on the back, we put a really neat pocket. And all off. athletes, like people yeah. that are running a lot, they're looking for chafe-free items and things that have a lot of ventilation. There you go. So we have a three, uh, a zippered three, three compartment pocket here on the back for all your 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 food your and your yeah your your, you your nutrition and, and water. So that's the the Sun Multisport shirt. Again, made you can you can wear this playing tennis. We made it for cycling and running primarily in mind, but it's perfectly suitable for any sport on land in the sun. And again, that ice film material, really neat science. Okay, so that's those are two shirts for the land. And for the ocean, um, we came out with a shirt for paddling we call the Sunphibian. I love this one, I love the color. Pretty cool. Well, we have, in, in fact, the, the ocean sport shirts we're bringing out in three colors, yellow, blue, and pink. This was a prototype made for, for our development. So um, made to be worn in and out of the water, uh, a little more mesh than you'd see in a traditional rash guard, a looser fit um, for mobility. And another thing I, I failed to mention too on, on the land based shirts, and this shirt too, is uh, raglan sleeves are designed for more mobility okay. as, as compared to a set in sleeve, which is, which is what you see here. Um, and also, too, these garments will feature flat lock stitching, which is very easy on the body. It's not like having a like a speaker cable, you know, on your on your uh, on your skin. And we put a, a pocket here as well, and also hold well, that a uh, a keychain holder here too, um, so you can hit the ocean and get back to your car and get out of there. Mm -hmm. So that's the Sunphibian, and then we um, also came out with the Rash Guard called the Sun Hydra and you know paddling um, a lot of the whole idea here was to eliminate friction and increase mobility so like the Sun Multisport we eliminated underarm seams so here if you're paddling reaching out um, you're gonna increase mobility but also reduce the likelihood of chafing so this is a very traditional rash guard called the Sun Hydra and we did for everybody here we came out with a very, oh. a very awesome travel print. And um, so we have this available too in our campaign right now. And we really want to turn the world on all, all cool things about Hawaii and, um, and the culture here too. So this is a, a special uh, a travel print version of the Sun Hydra shirt that we're, we're offering right now too. And um, one thing we're doing also with the land base shirts is the ability to customize because a lot of clubs and teams, you know, want to put their logos or sponsorship logos and right. whatnot on here too. So so this is uh, basically began as a white garment and everything you see here is, is dye sublimated printing, which um, is not gonna fade, it's not gonna make you sweat. Really cool technology on polyester these days too. And, and that that's made of the ice film material too. So that's um, gonna be really, really cool in the body. So the campaign, we launched it on the 23rd of July and it's ongoing right now until I'm sorry, the 23rd of June, ongoing until the 23rd of July. We have quite a ways to go here. So the whole intent behind the campaign is to um, bring the, the prototypes into production and launch, launch the line here in Hawaii. Um, but then also, again, we're saying is to build a capability to make this kind of clothing here. And as we, we learned, and as we talked about earlier, there's really nobody doing this right now. Um, 
And again, it's ironic because we're, we're in the land of the sun and also the epicenter for a lot of sports that these products are made for between surfing and paddling and triathlon and, and everything else under the sun here in, in Hawaii. So that's the story behind the Kickstarter campaign. So we have about a minute left. Okay. What do you, what is, what do you want to leave the audience with? What do I want to leave the audience with? Um, what are your closing words? My closing words, just be safe and be healthy in the sun. And I, I share with you my triad of achievement, right? Right. Um, one of my, my, the parts of my life philosophy. And you know, we have the great John Wooden, the pyramid of success, greatest, one of the greatest uh, life philosophies known to man, I think anyways. So in my triad. Here's the triad right here. Okay, there you go, yeah. Oh, that came out kind of weird there. We got, but anyways. Dream and so, believe on the side, guys. Yeah, dream, believe, and, and dream. So, you know, it all begins with a dream, right? I mean, we all know that. That's where things start. Fundamentally, too, you have to believe in yourself and what you're doing. If you don't, nobody else is going right. to. But the part that most people get wrong is doing. Most people never get to that part. It's like they, I've met so many people that have great ideas and great vision, but they don't execute. So my point to you all is to remember to take it to the next level and get it done by executing. So there's the great John, Woodman, John Wooden's Pyramid of Success, um, one of my favorite um, iconic uh, life philosophies ever created. And from there, I, I kind of developed my own throughout the years too. Um, but again, you know, ha have that vision, have that dream, but really when it comes down to it, you gotta get it done, you gotta do, do it, it, right? Kick some, kick some butt out there. And you've certainly done it with your launch of your whole campaign. And, and we're still doing it. Bringing out Planet Sun. <laughs> you guys are doing a great job. And I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Well, thank you. And Very awesome. Come to a close. So that's the Empower Hour, guys. I will see you next week. Have a great Aloha Friday. I'm your host, Maddie Scarpino, and I was here with John O'Malley. And we wish you the best of luck oh, thank you. on your future endeavors. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. All right. Aloha. Like Cindy.